We return to finish the Harry Potter saga with Lego Harry Potter's years 5 through 7. Now this follow up was released about a year after years 1 through 4, and due to that short time span, years 5 through 7 has very few changes from the original. However, considering that the first game was an overall enjoyable experience, it goes to stand that years 5 through 7 is just as enjoyable. Although there are some slight changes to the experience that does make years 5 through 7 stand out, rather than just being a copy and paste job. The story, much like the last time, recaps the last three books, or the final four films picking up with the Dementor attack all the way up to the final battle with Voldemort at Hogwarts. And also like the first game, the story is told with grunts, limiting how much of the source material can be clearly presented here. And considering that the more complex plot lines that emerged in the final three books, the story does what it can to get the general point across. Though much like the first game, prior knowledge of the franchise is recommended. I was also interested to see how the LEGO series would tackle the darker tone that was present in the final Potter books, given the more family-friendly feel of the other LEGO games, and I was actually pretty surprised in those moments. Even when adapting the darker moments from the series, the LEGO charm still manages to shine through. As expected, the gameplay has been largely untouched, and that's all for the best. The general design has you once again entering six levels based on each of the remaining films in the franchise. In between the levels, you move around Hogwarts, learning new spells to help you advance through the later stages. The levels once again have you exploring around looking for things to interact with that will allow you to progress further. In addition to the spell casting system this time around though is the Defindo spell which allows you to cut out shapes from the wall and then use those objects to build new things. There's not really much to this mechanic but it's definitely a little bit more interactive than the other spells you'll be using. One of the other new spell is Aguamente which allows you to put out fires and fill up water containers and Ron also gets a new ability in this game in the form of the Deluminator allowing him to swap lights around although you only gain access to this ability in Hollows Part 1 which restricts how many chances you get to use it during the overall main campaign. A cool new feature to the game are the refined duels and boss fights. Unlike in the first game, you don't have to just spam spells at your opponents to win fights. At least not in all encounters. This time you become locked into a circular arena and you have to match the color of the correct spell being cast by your opponent while also dodging and putting up shields. It's not tremendously difficult, but it is much more enjoyable than just throwing spells around that fly all over the place. The boss fights have also changed a bit in that now, during a boss fight, a boss will spawn out enemies while throwing objects at you, and the goal here is to take care of the spawning enemies, dodge the obstacles, and then use Wingardium Leviosa on the last object to throw it back at the boss. Sometimes you have to do this, and you have to duel with the boss, which makes the fights in this game more engaging than the fights from the first game, where it was more about building things in the environments to just hurt the boss. Again, just like in the first game, the story mode is really just the tip of the iceberg here. After completing the main campaign, you once again have to explore all of Hogwarts, Hogsmeade, Zygon Alley, and the random forest to find new characters, unlockables, red bricks, gold bricks, and new puzzles to solve. And this really is the best part of the game by far. It's just like in the first game, finishing the story mode only nets you about 35% of completion, so there's so much more to do here. And there's not just the exploring outside of the main story, but odds are you'll have to go back to the main campaign and replay story chapters to solve certain puzzles and interact with the objects that you couldn't do before. And again, much like the first game, my only complaints fall back onto the lack of difficulty and the issue of the puzzles that really want you to make use of two actual human players rather than relying on the AI. Just like all of the other LEGO games, difficulty isn't really a concern. It's part of the pick up and play mentality of these kind of games. Though it does feel weird again when you lose all of your hearts and the game just keeps respawning you over and over again. And like in the last game, there are certain puzzles that rely on one character doing something while the other character should be taking advantage of what that first character is doing. The AI characters are not always in the right spot for these segments, or heading to the right area, and they're certainly not protecting you during the fights. Just like I said in the last review, if you can play both of these games with another person, go for it, since going at it alone can sometimes feel like a hassle, as a lot of the puzzle solving is placed squarely on you, rather than splitting it up between you and a friend. The issue of the platforming from the first game is pretty much removed, however. The one spot on the covered bridge mission in Hollows Part 2, you do need to jump a few times off at the side, but that's hardly an issue compared to some of the spots that were present in the first game. The presentation has made quite the improvements despite only being one year older. The graphics are much more sharper than they were the first time around, and the LEGO figurines blend in better with the surroundings. Also, a standout level in regards to the presentation would be the Tale of the Three Brothers, which is presented in a 2D-style pop-up book, similar to what was seen in the movie, and it is very, very nice to look at. 
Once again, the soundtrack is amazing since the actual tracks from the film score are used. The work of composers Nicholas Hopper and Alexander Desplat is wonderful to behold as you move around each level. Overall, LEGO Harry Potter's year, years 5-7 through seven, is just as great as years 1-4. through four. Considering that 1-4 through four was not a bad game in any regards, it's not like 5-7 through seven had to reinvent the wheel here. 5-7 through seven does incorporate a few new mechanics, which just goes to show that the developers actually made effort on their part rather than just leaving everything the same, which could have come off as lazy and cheap. Like I also said in the last review, I felt that these games really capture the atmosphere of the Potter universe much better than even the movie-based games. And mainly because the movie-based games that were based on years 5-7 through seven were practically garbage, playing this feels like a breath of fresh air. So many of the moments that were cut from those movie-based games, or glossed over, or were just unplayable, are actually here, and it's better for it. So we've reached the end of the planned Harry Potter games that I wanted to include in this particular series, but the Harry Potter review se series is going to continue. There are the handheld games to look at, and God willingly, if I can ever get one to run on my computer, the PC games. But before we can get to all of that, there is one more console Potter game we have to look at. So come back next time to see what that game will be, and thanks for watching.